Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokémon Platinum! Last time, we got our first Pokémon, Turtwig, and made it here to Sand Gym Town. After speaking with Professor Owen, we learned that he wanted us to help him on completing the Pokédex. This time, we are setting out to do just that! Go on! Emil, your grand adventure awaits you! As much as our mother would want us to believe, we already had our grand adventure in just simply coming to Sand Gym Town, but you know what? We are on to bigger and better things. Let's go! Of course, not before getting interrupted, and, uh, Dong got interrupted trying to interrupt us. I have something good here, you should take this as well. We get TM27. This is our first TM. It's an item that'll teach Pokemon moves they can't normally learn through leveling up. In this case, we get the move Return, which does not call your Pokemon back to its Pokeball pointlessly. No, it is a normal type move that'll do more damage based on how much the Pokemon likes you. It's pretty strong, and it would probably do more damage than Tackle, Pound, or Scratch at this point. You might be thinking you might want to teach it to your Pokemon right away, but a TM is single use. You will get more TMs for return later on, so it's not the only one in the game, but personally, I think I do want to hold off a bit longer, because I have another idea for how I want to use this other than just on my starter. Let's see. Oh wow, I didn't know the professor had TMs. Was he a trainer when he was young? Seems like every professor was at one point or another. Okay, Emil, I'll act as your mentor. I've got a bit more experience than he was a trainer and as the professor's assistant. Um. Can I just point out that she said last time that her only Pokemon was a Piplup, and Piplup was in Professor Rowan's briefcase. Meaning that you picked your starter after me, you're like, oh, I have more experience. I think I'm so special just because I have a sock on my head and it looks so cool. Ah, okay, no. Building with the red, or er, orange roof is a Pokemon Center. It's a place that deals Pokemon that have been hurt in battle. You can find a Pokemon Center in most towns. I would correct her and say all towns, but I'm sure there's one case where it's not in a town that I'm not thinking of. Oh, right, Twin Leaf Town. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, Blue Roof, Pokemart. Shop where you can buy and sell items and medicine. Since you're a novice trainer, you won't be able to buy many kinds of merchandise. Oh, let me guess. Because you're so much more experienced than me, they will, of course, sell you better merchandise. Don't let it... Oh, screw you. Okay, I'm making Don out to be such a jerk. Oh, that's right, Emil. Don't you need to let your family know that you'll be helping Professor Rowan with this Pokedex? They may... You may need to go far away, so I think you should let someone know. Oh, before we go, you go, heal your Pokemon up at the Pokemon Center. It'll be a lot less scary that way. Okay, bye now. Off she goes. I would heal up at the Pokemon Center, but you really don't need to. As stated last time, whenever going, whenever backtracking, you just hop down these ledges and have a really quick, easy, direct route back to wherever you were going. On some routes, you might have some encounters, because you have to go through the grass in some areas, but here, that's not the case. Just head back to Twinley Town. What do you have to say? Are you still going to talk about Barry? Everyone goes off on adventures, and then they gradually grow up. Oh. Well, if he actually does really like Barry, that's kind of sad text when you think about it that way. Wow, I'm kind of sad now. Hi, Mom. Welcome home, Emil. Are you and your Pokemon healthy? Take a quick rest, dear. I don't get why they tell you to use the Pokemon Center. You can hop down the ledges, and then when you get here, your mother heals you anyway. I'm not, I don't know. What is it, Emil? Wow, Professor Rowan asked you to do something that big. Oh, de okay, dear. Go for it. Your mom's got your back. Oh, I know, Emil. I've got something that you'll find useful. We get the journal here. This is a bit of a strange item. It's not entirely necessary, but it can be helpful. Basically, it records everything you do in a day of real time. Uh, if you go a few days without playing, you can look at your journal to see what you were in the middle of doing last time you played. So there's not any getting lost and being like, oh, wait, what was I doing again? None of that. Gee, a journey full of adventure. I envy you, kiddo. Plus, you're not alone. You have your Pokemon with you. I wish I could go instead. I'm just joking, dear. Yep, Emil. I'll be alright by myself. So you go and enjoy your adventure. When you're exposed to new things and experience new sensations, it makes your mother happy too. But come back sometimes. I would like to see the kinds of Pokemon you've caught, dear. This is so sad! Just the Sinnoh mom in particular is so sad to say goodbye to. Can we have Barry's mom? Oh, then he must have left already. What to do? The boy shouted about going on an adventure, then he bolted. He's so headstrong and reckless, I at least wanted him to take this. Not to worry, Emil will deliver that to him. Um, I will. Won't you, Emil? Okay, fine, you gave me running shoes, I will do this. I owe you one, and well, I guess you owe her one or something. We get the parcel to deliver to Barry. Bye-bye, Emil, enjoy your adventure. Let me think. Knowing my boy, he would probably head straight to Jubilife City, so we know where we have to go next, but just, once again, this is such a sad scene. I mean, not just your own mother, though, but also the fact that Barry's mom is disappointed she didn't get to say goodbye. It's just... I don't know, as somebody who left home, this scene holds a lot more meaning to me now than it did when I was a kid. On the way there, Bodhi got to level 7, which should mean... 
Nothing. <laughs> Here we are back in San Gem Town. I want to go into the Pokemon Center really quick just to kind of show the things we can do, even though I don't personally need it. Might as well show it sooner rather than later. Of course, as usual, you talk to Nurse Joy to heal your Pokemon. Um, the PC I do want to show really quick. Eh, a lot of it's what you'd expect. Someone's PC is where whenever you have more than six Pokemon, the seventh one will just get sent to the PC and you can go here to shift around your party. All that is the same. But, Emil's PC. Normally, whenever your player has like a section in the PC, it means that it's your item storage. Not so in this game. Item storage in the bag is now limitless. You can have 999 of every item if you so wish. Now you just have the mailbox and a new mechanic called ball capsules. We can't really do these yet, but I just kind of wanted to show that. It's odd. The bag got massively buffed in the fact that you now can have as many of any items you want, but the PC got nerfed in that there's not a free potion inside of it like at the start of all the other games. Huh. Also, uh, Ruins, PC is in all caps, inconsistencies. If you go there, he will just simply evaluate your Pokedex. Look harder for wild Pokemon. Don't be afraid of going into tall grass. <laughs> wow, that sounds so passive aggressive. <laughs> Guess it's what I get for wasting his time by contacting him through email. Uh, right here we have a town map. You'll find this in any Pokemon Center. Uh, we can see that Jubilife City is exactly north of San Jim Town, so that's going to be our next destination. We have a lot of exploring to do. Wow, this place is huge. What do you have to say? Do you see the PC over there, the fancy blue one? Um, I'm not sure how fancy it is with that oval-shaped display, but okay. Go over here. Very sorry, we are working underground right now. It's off limits to the public. It sounds like they're doing something illegal when you word it that way. I'm sure you don't mean it that way, but still. There is an escalator to go up as well as this escalator to go down. We will be doing those things a little bit later, just kind of showing those off, but for now, I just wanted to go over the basics. Other than that, I guess I could go to the Mart just to kind of see what I can buy. I'm not really sure if it'll be much of anything special. We got Pokeballs right here, so we could go catch Pokemon right this second if we wanted to. We got Potions, which we've seen before. Uh, Antidotes will heal Poison, we've yet to see that status in game. And Paralyze Heal, or excuse me, Parlize Heal, heals Paralysis, I think I say that every game. We haven't run into those statuses yet, but we will in due time. We will. Let's see, what else is there here in San Jim Town? I think right over here. Yep, Dawn's house. You know, she might think that she's more experienced than me because she's a homeowner, but I got news for you. That house in the lower right of Twin Leaf Town, it says Emile's house on it, so ha! We got Don's little sister here. Is this guy Don's grandfather? Let's see, he's been studying Pokemon since way, way back. My son and grandchild helped Rowan with his studies now. Ah, okay, so I guess piecing that together because Don's father was there, he does. Also, uh, he is the grandfather, he does the grandfather, no. Also this room. Two beds, and it seems to clearly be a children's room. I guess that means Don's father and grandfather sleep in the bloody kitchen. I guess you really get the shaft when you're the adults and you're not the homeowner in the relationship. I wanna head down here to Route 219 really quick. There's not anything for us here other than just this item. We can get ourselves a free antidote right here since we will be coming into contact with poison in the near future. It is good to just come down here and grab that just for the heck of it. And again, not anything else. So how about we head out north? If we tried going here earlier, Don would be like, you need to go say goodbye to your mother because I like running your life. Ah. Wow, I really make her out to be a jerk. Oh, that's right. Um, sorry, Don. I feel like I haven't shown you how to catch a Pokemon. I'll demonstrate how to catch one, so just watch me, okay? If there is anything slower in Sinnoh than the walking speed, it is this tutorial. Here you go, running into a Bidoof. Go Piplup. I can't make this text scroll any faster. This is really as fast as it goes. Also! Your Piplup is level five. My Churchwig was like level six before I even knew you had a Piplup. You will have more experience than me, my after. No, really, I mean it. You have less experience than I do if you're lower level. There's not even like any sort of joke in there. It's just a fact of life. I, <laughs> come on, select these Pokeballs faster, jeez. It's like, yes, I get it. Touch the screen to make things happen, dude. Catch your Bidoof, go on ahead, please. And she catches it. Not like it matters, she's not gonna use us in any, any sort of battle in the future, at least I don't think she does. I'd be kinda surprised if she did. <laughs> See, isn't it neat? Sorry. <laughs> Actually, it's better to lower your target's HP more than I did. It's important to get the Pokemon's HP down as low as possible, without knocking it out, of course. This is because a healthy Pokemon is very difficult to catch. Oh, Pokemon are also get easier to catch if you make them sleep or something by using Pokemon's moves. So status ailments will affect that. Again, we haven't really seen those yet. She's gonna give us five Pokeballs, because she is oh so generous. I guess that means she has 14 now. If you have lots of Pokemon with you, it'll be safer on long trips. Plus, it'll be a lot more fun having Pokemon friends along. Okay, I need to get going. Bye now. 
Someday, I will catch up to you. Okay, well, here we go. We are finally out in a route where we can catch wild Pokemon. It's starting to feel like a real journey here. Speaking of things that you'd encounter on a real journey, we have a trainer. First instance of a trainer battle. They're pretty much the same. It's just that their Pokemon tend to be higher leveled. You get more experience for beating them than you do wild Pokemon, and well, you have to take out their entire team. Oh, also their team tends to be higher leveled than the wild stuff around here. So a level five Starly. Uh, since we are seeing a Starly right here and we can finally catch Pokemon, I see no better time than to go over the encounters that we can now get on this route. Now, before saying that, I do want to make note of two things. One is that the encounter rates in the sidebar are Platinum's encounter rates. They may differ a bit if you are playing Diamond or Pearl, so take it with a grain of salt if you are playing along using one of those versions. There just simply was not a good way to display all the data across all the versions, so I went with Platinum. Besides, I recommend Platinum as being the version that you play anyway, as it is the most complete version of Sinnoh. Second, is that in the bios, I didn't say this last time, but the stats that are going to be displayed there are that of the fully evolved form of that Pokemon, not the current stage. Just because that's typically what you want to know. There will be some times where I won't be doing this, but unless otherwise stated, that is how it is. Now, moving on to Starly. And oh boy, it's one of my favorites. Starly, if you didn't pick Chimchar, is one of the best physical attackers you're going to come across for quite some time. It learns a surprising diversity of moves, so unlike a lot of other early game Pidgey clones, you don't really have to worry about it getting walled by stuff that resists normal and flying all that much. In addition to that, when it evolves, it gets Intimidate for its ability. Lowering your opponent's attack stat as soon as it comes out into battle is one of the most commonly useful abilities out there, so it's definitely useful in that way making up for its poor defenses. Let me put it this way, the only reason why I'm not catching this for my team is because I've used it in so many other playthroughs that I just want to mix things up for myself. That is the only reason I'm not catching it. Next up is the almighty derp itself, Beedoof! My only advice, catch it. Yeah, simple as that. Okay, fine, I'll tell you more, but I'm not kidding. You want to catch a Beedoof. If you want to raise it for your team, it'll ultimately become a water normal type, something unique only to it. Which, you know, that's nice, getting same type attack bonus from something that's not normal. Um, it's also not far off from learning Headbutt and Rollout, which are really strong moves for early game. But that's not why I would say that you most definitely want to catch it. If you wanted to raise it, it's actually one of the better Radita clones, if you ask me. But the main reason why you want it is that Sinnoh is rich with terrible HM moves that you need to learn to progress the story, but are so bad that you would never want to teach them to your main Pokemon. Bidoof can learn so many of these moves, and you'll want it around for just that purpose, if nothing else. As much as those teeth would have you think otherwise, it is a lot more than a shameless Radita clone. And you know what? If... Yes! Yes! I am going to catch this one right here, just so that I have it for later. Not to use on my team, of course, but again, HM moves are going to be really nice to not have to worry about. As much as I've been making it sound like every Pokemon in Sinnoh is gold up to this point, along comes Cricketot. Ugh, okay. Only knows Growl and Bide until it evolves. Its only way of doing damage is by doing nothing for two turns and then counterattacking. It's so weak that it's unlikely to be able to survive two hits for most anything without you using items on it. It's just really not a very good Pokemon. And not only if you want to raise a bug type, are there better options not too far down the line, but if you want to raise a Cricketot in particular, in the not too distant future, you'll be able to catch its evolved form in the wild meaning that it'll know more moves than just growl and bide, and in fact, its evolve form is even more common in the wild than it. It has no purpose for existing. What's the matter, Cricketot? You feeling like the obviously scrap pre-evolution of Volbeat and Ilumese that you are? Oh! I am so lame, never doing that again, wow. Anyway, on to Shinx. I'm gonna be more positive here. It is a physical attacking electric type, and its attack stat is actually very solid for this early in the game, even in its base form. It can get Intimidate for an ability, which is the one I would recommend out of the two, but downside of Shinx is that it doesn't learn very many good attacking moves leveling up, and since it's meant to be a physical attacker, I do have to dock it a little bit on that. It doesn't even learn that many good physical TMs either, so it's a little bit tapped in that way. It might not be a good long-term solution, but it's good early on. And even though it has legitimate problems, I can't really be mad at it. It's just so cute. Other than Furret, it's probably the Pokemon I would want to have as a pet the most. Oh, um, this trainer right here, he has a Burmy. He didn't have that in Diamond and Pearl. Um, I guess now that we're done with Bios, I could go over the fact that even though we're seeing a Burmy for the first time right here, oh, wow, a critical hit. Wow, I'm kind of surprised it took that long for one to pop up. Uh, yeah, I took double damage there. Uh, anyway. 
Even though we're seeing a Burmy for the first time, I'm only going to do bios when we're able to obtain a Pokemon for the first time ourselves. So, if you're wondering why I'm not explaining Burmy right here, that would be why. Took that out, we got 64 experience, my favorite number. Got to level 9. Finally learned Absorb. Wow, I was way off in thinking I was going to get it at level 7. Let's hope that I can use that in the next battle. That is our first grass type move, so I definitely want to try using that. Again, same type attack bonus. I'll get one and a half times damage from that. You are not a trainer. Uh, what are you? Some Pokemon only appear in the morning. Some only come out at night. I'll keep looking till I've seen them all. That is indeed what is displayed in the sidebar. Thank you for bringing that up. Get a potion to replace the one that I used against a freaking Bidoof. So we'll go through that. And uh, Jubilife City is just up ahead. We've caught up to you. That someday is today. Hi, Emil. Are you catching Pokemon? Um, I think you'd feel a lot safer if you were to catch them. Screw you! You know, like when you need to travel to faraway places, like, oh, I don't know what you're doing on this journey. Oh, I know. Don't you think it's better to know more about Pokemon? Sure it is. I just know the place. Come on, don't be shy. Follow me. Uh, she is so controlling. That man, what is he doing? Um... What? How did you know? How did you unmask me as a member of the international police? Huh? What? I beg your pardon? I was just making conversation. <laughs> you claim you're only making conversation, do ya? But I know better not to believe that. No, no, no. You recognized right away that I was someone extraordinary. That is why you spoke to me, is it not? Your power of observation is fearsome. Quite admirable you are. Now that my cover has been blown, let me introduce myself. I am a globe-trotting elite of the International Police. My name? Ah, uh, no. I shall inform you only of my code name. My code name, it is Looker. Wink. It is what they all call me. Incidentally, is the saying, don't be a thief familiar to you? I kind of believe in that, but I can't really say I've heard it as an old saying. No? You claim to not know it? How could that be? Perhaps your mama has said it, but you have forgotten it, like usual. What do you mean, like usual? Have you been watching me? Um, yeah, I know it's wrong to take what belongs to others, but I'd kind of like to... Never mind. Unfortunately, there are apparently those who do not heed those words. In Sinnoh, in fact, there are criminals stealing the Pokémon of others. I have, therefore, been on the lookout for characters arousing my suspicion. Incidentally, you are trainers, yes. Perhaps you can make use of this. Get the versus recorder. That makes it so that whenever you're playing any sort of multiplayer battle, you're able to record the fight and play it back again and again. But um, we'll get into why that's not really so useful later when it comes time for us going over that kind of thing. The versus recorder. It was a nifty little device for recording a match. I obtained it because it is quite popular these days. Um, I kind of like to imagine that he got fooled into paying a lot of money for it at like a flea market or something like that because the guy was just trying to get rid of it, but... Also, I have a request. If you were to see me again, I ask that you not talk to me, for I am on duty. Actually, yes, yes, you may speak to me. You must. Not because I am lonely. No, no! You must, you must inform me of bad guys. You must inform me of any happenings. Working for the International Police must be hard. Don, don't you know when you've been hit on? Ugh. So here is the trainer's school. Name says it all. I saw your friend Barry go in earlier. He could still be in there studying. Okay, bye now. Well, she, I guess, gave up on our little race and decided to go back. Let's go inside and meet up with Barry. Hello there. Hey, Emil, did you come to study too? Went ahead and memorized everything that was up on the blackboard. After all, it's trainer's job to avoid having their precious Pokemon hurt in battle, right? Um, we got something for you. Let's give this to you. So what is this? Score, it's a town map. Huh, why are there two in here? I like it a lot, but I don't need two. Here, Emil, you can take one. He is very slow on the uptake and very tactless. Hmm, well, according to the town map, I guess Orberg City is where I should be going next. There's a gym, so it'd be perfect for raising the Pokemon I just caught. Well, I'm on the road to becoming the greatest trainer of all time. See you around. I am still envious of his walking speed. What do you have to say? So, trainers and Pokemon develop their own pace. If there's anything they're not familiar with, you can look up here. Barry was reading the blackboard, so I guess we can take some time to look at it. These are the various status changes that we've heard about. Poison makes you lose a little bit of HP at the end of every turn, as well as every few steps that you take outside of battle. Um, unlike in previous games, though, Poison cannot knock out a Pokemon outside of battle, so that's nice. Burn cuts your attack stat in half, and it makes it so that you will lose a little bit of health at the end of each turn. 
Paralyzed cuts your speed in half and makes you have a 25% chance of not attacking. Frozen and Sleep are more or less the same thing, just that Frozen can be gotten rid of with getting hit by a Fire-type move. It just makes you completely unable to move for a few turns. Now we can get this and get an X attack. That's an item that'll buff your attack stat in battle. It's a one-time use item. That can be very useful, actually. With that out of the way, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, if we went over this way, we could battle a few trainers, but I think I want to hold off. Bodhi is level 9, and, well, if I wanted to train something else, then this would be a good place to train. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, mm -mm. <laughs> Anyway, I want to go ahead and head outside. And I want to point out that it's nighttime since I went in there. Wow, that's kind of funny. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Well, you know you spent too long on an explanation when... <laughs> I was going to say that the schoolhouse apparently can't afford a front door. It's kind of funny when you look at it. It's like a barn more than a schoolhouse, but man, we think education budgets are getting slashed in the U.S. Man, Sinnoh has got it so much worse. Anyway, though, we have gotten to Jubilife City and found Barry. We've also made it through a route, and, well, we've made quite a bit of progress. I think we're going to end things off here. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're going to explore Jubilife City and see what there is for us here. See you guys then.